Keith's making engine control support which will fit into the leading edge of the French wing. Morning Keith. What's this you making formers for? What are they? Hey, what's this you making formers for? They're not formers. Oh, aren't they? No. There's, there's five of these in the leading edge. Oh, is it? On each side. And what they do is they, uh, they support the engine controls. And oh, yeah. And the fuel pipes and the uh, electrical cables. So these were the formers, were they? They're the, they're the templates I made. The up templates, for. yeah. yeah. Each one's got a template. Yeah. And there they go on. They've all been making the door. And they're all made out of plywood for the. Plywood with an aluminium. Bonding skin on them. Yeah. And these are for engine controls? Then. Yeah, they mount the engine controls as they go through, and the chains go down through the slots. Yeah. They've got like a fairly yeah. bit bolts all through them. Do you have a metal side both sides? No. no. Just one side. Yeah. What, what's the square not cut out? That's where the, uh, the block goes. There's a a little wooden block yeah. that goes on there yeah. and that bonds in that slot to the wood yeah. and then the, the pipe sits on that and it actually rests, the pipe rests on it. I'm in the process of making them in a moment. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Oh, I'll, right. I'll let you finish that. Dave's making formers right, for the doorway, the last of the front and section of the rear here. fuselage. Inside the door frame. Yeah, other side of the door frame we've got one of these in. Um, oh, it's not a complete No, it sits in sits inside for um, strength purposes. Yeah. And uh, so it's not a complete no, you know, no. former. So these these are a breeze to make compared. Yeah. <laughs> Have you made the two formers for the door? Or you... How about the, what, this one here is in paint at the minute. Yeah. So I'm just making the bit to go inside it and then I've just got the other side of the door to do. Yeah. So I had to make this out of wood as well because we yeah. didn't have a, um, a jig for it so I had to make that yeah. and obviously pop it out, square it up and then it, it's um, ready. Yeah, that's why the door frame set up a bit longer because we've got the inner bit. Did I, did I have that one out at a start? Mm -hmm. I, must, I, must I think you had, yeah. Yeah, must have yeah. yeah. So once that's painted and the end of it's paint, that can go back in, and then I set the other side of the door out, and then that's it. Yeah. You were making this one last that's, week, I oh think. That, yeah, that's all done and in, yeah. Yeah. It's just this baby to do. Yeah. And it, again, it's got an inside bit, so... Yeah. The same as the other one. Oh. You can't see. Oh, the inside bit starts yeah, here, yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. And it can pop near the top. Yeah. I thought it went all the way around, but yeah. it doesn't yeah. just... Barely just moved mainly where the door yeah. is. That looks a pretty good one, that skin. Hey? That one looks alright. Yeah. We're going to come off, take them off, have a look at them. It's got, it's got some rivets in here, but I don't know what. There's nothing on the back of it. They just, I think they're just filling holes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'll take it off. If I can put it back on and use it again, I'll use it again. But um, <coughs> just look at that. 
You know, mate, it's where the washers go. Oh, that's the icing, right, yeah. The icing tap, but like... Yeah. But you look at that, it looks like he's been shot up with a shotgun, so... Yeah. I'll take it off and make a new one. Yeah. It's coming on. Yeah. Start getting the riveting done down the other side. I've made a start on getting rivets back in it. If I could do a rose in the river to that's what I need. Oh what, sorry? So I could do a rose in the river to give yeah. me hands, you know what I mean? Yeah. Alright. So yeah, today we'll be mainly drilling all day today. That's a good selection of plates. Terry's working on a new batch of cleats. What Norm's left me to do. There you go, just finished shaping them up. Yeah. Have you got a wasp on your shelf? No, it's just gone. Yeah, turn that over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it fits on there, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Are they glued on or what? Yeah, they're glued to the to the wood. Yeah. And a little gap around the edge. Yeah. Then they're, they're not finished yet. Really. That's how they sit. Yeah. And you made the plates first, did you, brother? <coughs> uh, I made them first. Yeah. Made them to the drawings. Yeah. Then put them on the wood, drew round them all, drilled all the pilot holes in, and then got the metal, and then made exactly the same again out of metal. Is it marine ply or is it just a good standard this ply? Is, this is just standard ply on it. Yeah. But the one, it could be good there for this. Yeah. But when, I should imagine when we come to do, I've got to do two sets now for, for, for Jane, for the port and starboard wing. So uh, we'll I should imagine we'll have to get, a, ply, yeah. we'll get a, a sheet of proper marine ply for yeah. that. Because it's uh, hellish expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good then. How many of these you've done? Uh, 24. Do they fit along the... No, uh, I only need 20. Oh. Oh, well, you need 20 for these, do you? Yeah, there's one in each of these. Yeah. So there's five, five for this one. Yeah. And there's two sets I've got to make for Jane. Yeah. So that's another ten. Yeah. And that gives us five spares. Yeah. You never know, they yeah. might come unstuck and yeah. get lost or whatever, but if they're all in the system, all part numbered up and yeah. I think you can always glue one in position. Yeah. Do you have to use a special wood glue or just a standard? Oh, well, I don't know, we've just been, I've been trying to sort some this morning and, you know, quality glue scotch. Yeah, because, I mean, they both wear wood there. Scotch weld. Yeah. Um, 847, I think it was. Yeah. And that, um, that's like a two-part contact adhesive. Yeah. But it'll stick wood, metal, yeah. rubber, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, aircraft quality yeah, is not... Yeah. You know, we'll be in the Yeah. If you've got water, petrol, cold, heat. It, yeah, it's um, fuel and oil yeah. resistant yeah. adhesive. Yeah. Oh, good. I'll let you get on then. All right, man. Thank you. Chris was working on the French Lancaster nose section, refitting the mounts with this type of Rebecca area in last week's video. Okay, so you did come out Aids fitting the cupola to the front gun turret. This gun turret came with the French fuselage nose section and will be fitted onto Just Jane while they restore Just Jane's to airworthy condition. The gun's locating and locking device, as Aid commented last week, it looks like a carbonic catch. Thank you. 
if I lift it up, I can't go back. Because it, it means wrap around it. Repro one. Fingers. <laughs> it went. Back is this shroud at the front. Just there. I know it is. It's got a little modification. Isn't it? Yeah, it's good to I clear all round. Yeah. Yeah. Must be a lot of fiddling around getting all the fasteners in. Yeah. Just a little bit of trimming to do. A little bit of trimming to do and then we'll get all the fasteners in. Yeah. Well, you, um, you have to be careful not to push the first bit, the, whatever they call it now. <laughs> Not the first bit, the acetate sheet. The yeah, acetate sheet. Yeah, we have to, to pull it out. The trick is not to break it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Whereabouts did you do your stop drilling? Uh, so there's that one. So that, I was coming down here, so that was the last one, that was the one before last, and that's when it cracked. But it gives it a bit of authenticity. It does, yeah. Yeah. And anyway, the gunner couldn't have seen through there anyway, so it's, 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 it's a massive great load of turret in the way, so yeah. Were these off in No, 303s. 303s? Yeah, brand new 303s, yeah. Mark II star, yeah. Very big, weren't they? I wouldn't want to be in the way of one. No, but I mean, when you... No, the, 
it's a, it's a, when you look at the diameter. Oh yeah, yeah. but I mean, it, it's a really good gun, the Browning 303. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an outstanding weapon. It, get, it gets some bad press these days, but in, in reality, yeah, it's, a gun. it's a very, very good gun. It's a, certainly the Browning stopped us losing the war. Yeah. And if we had, I mean, we had eight, we had eight Brownings in all our fighters. And if we yeah. hadn't done that, yeah. yeah, we'd have been in big trouble. You know, yeah. it was, it was in it. Uh, as a as a platform, certainly for the Battle of Britain, you know, with uh, with fighters having eight Browning three three o threes each, yeah. that that was a game changer for the Battle of Britain. It, when you consider how much projectile that could yeah. push out, and it was it was fast firing, it was accurate, it was quite hard hitting, and then you had a blend of ammunition. You could have normal ball ammunition, but you could also have yeah. Tracer, armor piercing, and incendiary mixed in a belt. Is it? Oh. Yeah, so you, you can imagine you know, your, ball, your ball ammunition has sort of knocked bits of aeroplane off. Yeah. Armor piercing knocks holes in the armor. Then the incendiary is set fire to whatever you hit. And yeah. then you've got Tracer for accuracy. So it, it was a, it's a quite a winning cocktail. Yeah. You know, if you compare it to the, the, yeah, the I mean, they, they were getting up between 50 and 100 yards away, weren't they? Yeah. The opening fire with that lot. I, 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 can't, I can't remember the exact figures now, but the I think the, the harmonisation, as in the, the, the where the guns harmonised or fired at. Uh, I think originally, I think they were looking at maybe 200 yards. I think that maybe the figure, but a lot of the pilots preferred it to be a lot closer, so they were getting in a lot closer. Yeah. There's a guy. A guy um, who taught military history in America said probably the most important decision of World War II was in 1930s, in the mid 1930s, when a group of senior Air Force officials got together and decided to put eight guns in it in the fighters. Yeah. Because compared to the German ME 109ML at the time, which had two guns of that calibre and one 20 mm cannon, I mean. The, the eight gun Browning thing was yeah. quite a Good, shame, right, like, yeah. game changer. And it, the front, I mean, bear in mind the front turret, it was a defensive position, but it was actually not manned all the time. It was, it was a bomb aimer's job to use, use that. You had four on the back. Uh, and again, they took out a lot of night fighters with the Browning 303s. I mean, it was a, it was a formidable weapon. You know, yes. People think it's too small. And yeah, later in, by the end of the Battle of Britain, in fact, the, the, the eight gun, eight branding thing was kind of it done its job. Yeah. Um, but yeah. the Germans were starting to armour against it. So then we needed to get something better. You know, yeah. And More power. we came up with a Hispano 20, yeah. 20 millimeters. We actually had Hispanos, one squadron, I think it's 105 squadron, had Hispanos for the from the Battle of Britain, but they were withdrawn from the front line because they're having so much trouble with the Hispano, the early Hispanos. Yeah. But then a, this absolute superman, um, uh, Desmond Mullins, came onto the scene, and Mullins was the guy that fixed everything that the Air Force couldn't work out how to fix. So Mullins Machine Company, MMC, they, before the war they made cigarette rolling machines. So, you know, basically. Yeah. Um, so they were really new about springs, yeah, and um, and working, yeah, you know, complex machines basically to roll a cigarette. And so Desmond Mullins was the guy. He he was invited to sort out the Hispano feeding gun feed system, and he did it. And he, but he also came up with other things. Um, the gun, the mounting for the whopping great gun on the um, on the Mosquito. That was Mullins, Desmond Mullins, and he also. Did all the work on the improvements to the one and a half inch signal pistol. That was Mullins as well. Mm. He, he seemed to be the person to go to with difficult Come up problems. With the difficult, yeah, difficult problems. Yeah. yeah. And a guy called G. F. Wallace sort of seemed to get on really well with Mullins, and, and they got around an awful lot of problems. Good. Yeah, it's good. So it's good. It's a really good gun. It's under. It's, it's, it's been done down since the war. Yeah. The Browning 303 it was absolutely outstanding gun. Absolutely outstanding. Certainly, nobody would want to be in the way of one. So, yeah. So two, 
perfectly adequate. Yeah. I think. Okay, thanks, Andy. Another no really good story. <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha. It fitted all right, though, didn't it? Just a yeah, a bit complicated uh, hydraulic pipe. Just the a top. lot of stuff getting in the way. Yeah. yeah. And so you yeah, haven't got a lot of room to manoeuvre. No. Just line it all up and screw it up. Yeah. But what what John notices, I've got a little bit of. Um... Good. That's great. Right, yeah. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers.